Budget PCs are all about maximizing price to performance, yet I constantly see budget gaming builds that overspend on less essential components, which forces people to settle for lower tier graphics cards and less FPS. Now the absolute worst offender of this? PC cases. So in today's video, we're going to review what do you need out of a case, and I'll go over some of the best budget cases on the market right now. Before we get stuck into it, thank you so much for joining us. Please, if you can't give me a hand, we're relaunching the channel after the coming of the great disaster, and I could really use your support. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot for the channel to get it back on its feet. Here we go. So first, let's go over why this even matters, right? If you have all the money in the world for your gaming PC, then it doesn't, frankly. You just spend whatever you want to spend. But if you're like, the 99.9% .9 of us out there that have a set amount that we can spend on our gaming PC, it matters quite a bit. Let's take an example of a $700 uh, budget. The more money you spend on less essential components, the case, uh, even to some extent the, the storage and things of that nature, the power supply, the less you're going to have to spend on the really critical components that are going to increase your FPS. Let me give you an example. Okay, so let's start off with a, a build with a very, very popular case in it. And we're going to compare it to a build with the exact same components, only we're going to see how, by saving a little bit on the case, we're going to actually be able to step up 25% in our FPS just because we're going to be able to get a better graphics card. So here we are, we've got a Ryzen 3 build uh, with a GTX 1660 Super and one of the most popular cases on the, uh, on the market right now, which is the NZXT H510. And look, it's a fine case. It, I don't happen to like the airflow in it, but it looks great, especially if you want to do a black on white build. And a lot of people absolutely love the way these cases look. I'm not here to knock them. If this is the case for you, by all means, buy it. But let me show you the difference between now buying this case and buying a cheaper case. So here we are with the exact same build, same Ryzen 3, the same motherboard, the same memory, the same storage, <clears throat> the same power supply. But all we've done is we've subbed in what I happen to think is one of the absolute best budget cases on the market, which is the DIY PC F2. It's a micro ATX case. If you're building budget, by the way, I always tend to go micro ATX if I can on the motherboard because it just opens up a lot of possibilities with cases and other things of that nature. And micro ATX motherboards tend to be cheaper. Uh, so what we've done is we've subbed in this, this case right here, which we'll go over in just a little bit. Fantastic little case, great airflow. In fact, in some ways, at least my personal opinion, maybe even a slightly better case than the NZXT case for airflow. But what we've been able to do is go up to an RX 5600 XT from the GTX 1660 Super. Well, what does that mean? It means we have 25% more FPS. This is a fantastic graphics card. We weren't able to afford it before. And look, it's only a couple of dollars more. It's $696. Our last build was about $690 something. It's only a couple of bucks more than the other build. What's the difference? We traded out a component with no performance aspect to it whatsoever, a case, beautiful case, for a much cheaper case. It still looks pretty good and a fantastic graphics card. So that's the power of this. Okay, so what are the key things that you're looking for when you're buying a case? Well, the first one is, and this is probably obvious, but just in case it's not, is does it fit your motherboard? And as you can see here, I got three different motherboard sizes. These are the most popular motherboard sizes. I won't get into extended anything. Uh, and, and frankly, it's really just these two here. So you've got what's called an ATX motherboard. It's the full featured. It's got all the PCI slots on it. Then you've got a micro ATX board and it, the only difference between the two is that it has fewer PCIe slots. That's that's really it. Uh, sometimes they have fewer DIMM slots for the memory but you know you can certainly get them with just as many. So that's the thing you want to make sure that the case you're getting is going to fit your motherboard. That if you're getting a micro ATX case you're not buying an ATX motherboard because when you go to put the motherboard in the case it's not going to fit. The second thing you want from a PC case, especially a budget PC case, is you want to make sure it has enough airflow. So 
What does that look like? Well, typically most cases will take in air from the front of the case and they'll expel it either out the back of the case or out of the top. That's very simplified. There's obviously more setups than that. So when you're looking at a case, look at the front panel, look at the side panels. If you can't understand in less than 20 seconds how that case gets air into the case, it probably doesn't get any air in the case. It's probably a dud. And there's a lot of cases out there that have absolutely terrible airflow, even though they're expensive and they look nice. So I would recommend taking a look at the case, look at the front panel, look at the side panels, make sure you understand how air gets in there. And if it's not obvious, it means it doesn't exist. Also, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to take into account is when you buy a case, how many fans does it come with? If it only comes with one fan, that's not enough for a gaming PC build. That's enough for like a, a desktop that you get from Dell that's just gonna do office tasks. But when you put a, a, a GPU in there and you're hitting that thing when you're gaming, I would strongly recommend you at least have one front intake fan with a clear path for air intake and one exhaust fan in the rear. And if you have to add fans to the PC case, make sure to figure that in to the overall budget for the case. Finally, in addition to making sure the PC has the USB ports and, and all the front panel I.O. that you're looking for, you also want to make sure that this case is something that you can build in. Here's a great example of some crappy cable management. And I'll tell you why it's crappy cable management, because this case doesn't look like it has any room on the backside, really, for the cables. So that's another factor to take into account, because Bad cable management, first of all, looks like crap. I'd hate to have a clear panel on the side of this thing. Um, I'd be embarrassed if this were if this were my build. And secondly, this impedes airflow. If you look at the fan in the bottom right-hand corner of this picture here, it's got to push through all this junk uh, in order to pull air in. And that, to me, is, is kind of crazy. So again, uh, ease of building is also one of the things you're looking for in a case. And of course, then there's aesthetics as well. Okay, now let's launch into the cases. We're gonna start at the cheapest one and go all the way up. Links are gonna be down in the description so you don't have to grab this off my screen. And we're gonna start with what I consider the absolute bare minimum case for an ATX build. That's a full-size ATX motherboard. Of course, a, a mini ITX, a, excuse me, a micro ATX will fit in here just as easily, although I would recommend the next case I'm gonna show you for a micro ATX. This one is the DIY PC Solo T2-R. Um, pr pretty much sort by lowest uh, price case on Newegg. It's $24.99, of course they charge you six, six bucks for shipping, so if you add all that together, it's about $31, which I don't know how you get a cheaper case than that. Why do I like this case? It comes with two fans installed. It comes with one in the front and one in the rear. It actually does have a little bit of a grill here, so you can see how some air gets in. I'm not gonna tell you that the airflow in this case is fantastic. Certainly, it's got some uh, got some challenges to it, but at least it exists. It exists, I can see how air would get into this case, and I can see how air would exit this case. It's got plenty of room in here for whatever size, whatever length graphics card you have, and on top of that, it has something that I may have forgotten to talk about in cases, which is that I always wanna make sure that when I am putting my power supply in the case, that it has somewhere that I can turn the fans to the exterior of the case and has a grill there so the power supply can grab its own air and doesn't have to borrow air from the uh, the PC case itself and just you know continue heating everything up. And that's true with this case. The P uh, PSU would go right down here, you'd face the fan down and there is a little bit of a grill area where it could suck up its own air. I don't love that the feet on this are very small. So if you're gonna put this on carpet, I would actually put some piece of wood or something underneath it so that uh, this, this vent doesn't get clogged. But overall, it's good enough. Um, though, if you are building budget and you are able to get a micro ATX motherboard, which is what I would strongly recommend, let me show you a better case. Okay, so for $5 more, if you have a micro ATX motherboard, which I strongly recommend you buy, there is the DIY PC F2 case. It's the F2 case. And it comes in three different colors, and they alternate on which one is the cheapest on Newegg. Why, I don't know. It just seems like they're playing with our minds at times. My personal favorite is the white. I think it's got kind of a cool retro look. 
I have been told by people that I spec this out for that they thought it was absolute garbage. Hey, if you if retro kind of look is not for you, that's fine. Uh, I happen to like the look of it quite a bit. Uh, it also comes in purple. Uh, I saw somebody do a great Batgirl build for their daughter with this thing, and they, they did some custom paint on it. It looks, looked phenomenal. And then the orange one. And I'm, I spent a long time in San Francisco uh, earlier in my life, and I was a Giants fan, so I love the orange and black. Maybe it's Halloween to you. Or maybe you look at this thing and you think, man, that's ugly. I wouldn't get that one. My personal favorite is the white one. Uh, again, take into account the shipping. So this one, while this one looks cheaper than the white one right now, they're actually giving you free shipping on the on, on the white case. So it's $37. So for only, you know, six bucks more, micro ATX, I would go with something like this. If we take a quick look at why, it's because it's got, again, two fans. It's got one fan here. It's got better ventilation in the front than the other one does, in my opinion. Uh, great exhaust here on the rear. It's got the hard drive cage. It, again, will fit any size, effectively graphic chart. It's got a nice little side panel. And if you do a decent job cable managing it, this can look really nice. I've seen some really, really nice builds with this. The other thing is on the ventilation side, it has actually this top grill as well where you could mount another fan here. Uh, I don't know if you could get an AIO mounted on this, uh, an all-in-one uh, liquid cooler, even maybe 120, if that'll go there or not, but you could certainly try. Uh, if you're gonna do liquid cooling though, you're gonna be spending more money and you don't need a case like this. You'll, you'll buy a nicer case. It does have one USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0 and some decent audio ports. So this, in my opinion, is absolutely hands down the best budget case to, to buy for builds, probably all the way up to seven or $800, uh, where you're really every dollar needs to go into performance at this point. So then I have two builds, I have two cases that are actually kind of tied and they're both ATX mid towers. So they'll fit a full size ATX board as well as the micro ATX boards. These have slightly better airflow than the ones I've just shown you. This is the first one is the Roswell Gaming ATX Mid Tower. Again, link in the description below. It actually has three fans pre installed. It's got two in the front, one in the rear. This is a case that's highly rated. People generally have had a good experience. It does have a clear side panel on the, uh, on the side. It's acrylic, I believe. It's not glass. So it's nothing too fancy. But again, it's the, kind of, it's the kind of case that you could put together. It'll look nice. It has two USB 3.0 on the top as well as two USB 2.0. So it's got a little bit more I.O. If you're going to do video editing kind of builds, you're going to be plugging in, for instance, external hard drives, and you want to have two or more plugged in and right there, it's really convenient, especially can, since you can stick them right on top of the case. And again, it's got that nice spot for the PSU in it over here and I do, do believe it's got a, a grill on the bottom as well. Next we're going to go over to the kind of tied with this case is the Zalman S2. It's only available on Amazon. Uh, actually the only the other case I just showed you are only on, available on Newegg. This case is only available on Amazon and I kind of like it. It is uh, it's acrylic it's not glass so you got to be careful not to scratch the side panel up. But it does come again with three fans, although it shows them all three here. It comes with two mounted in the front, one mounted in the rear. And I think it's a nice looking little case. It's $50. Again, now we're up a couple of more bucks. But frankly, because there's such a dearth of decent cases between the first two I showed you and all the way up to the $50 mark, this is a case I would certainly recommend taking a look at. Uh, however, I think that these cases are more the honorable mention. The best case and my favorite case comes next. Now we're going to come to my absolute favorite budget case for high airflow systems. So if you have a system that you know you're going to need quite a bit of ventilation in, this is a fantastic case. The other, the other thing I like about it, if you absolutely have to have RGB in your case, this has some really beautiful uh, four RGB fans. It's got the mesh front. First of all, it's only $54 with free shipping. $54, four RGB fans, um, great case. It's te it is tempered glass on the side. It's got a mesh intake right here. That's all mesh all the way down. And then it's also got uh, the side intake as well on the front, which I really like. A lot of cases you either see mesh or you'll see the side intake. 
I love that they've said, hey, we're going to go max airflow with this thing. Uh, it's made, again, Montec. The only thing I don't really like about the case, and I'll just get this out of the way right now, is it has a logo right across the side. Now, look, this is an opportunity. If you're a creative person and you've got some paint and you want to black that out and put like a cool logo of your own, I actually think one of the cool things about this is the amount of like real estate you have here on the bottom of the case to put some cool artwork if, if you're into kind of DIY kind of stuff. The other thing, the other only other downside about the case is that the PSU shroud down here, it's pretty tight, as you can see. Uh, this will only leave you on most power supplies about 40 millime millimeters, that's a, what is it, an inch or two. So when you have your cables, you're going to have to do some delicate cable management with it. Again, nothing to me that would put me off buying this case because it's a fantastic, fantastic case. Um, what else to say about it other than it's got, I believe, if we look at the I.O., it's got uh, three ports on the top. I believe two are USB two, uh, 3.0 and one is USB 2.0. Don't quote me. Of course, check out the, the product page uh, before you buy it. But if you're looking for high airflow, fantastic RGB, and you absolutely have to have RGB in your case and tempered glass, this is the budget case to get. And finally, if you're really looking for a budget case, no, I'm just kidding. This is <laughs> desktop. But if you made it this far in the video, I figured you deserve a laugh. Uh, hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe. Again, I'm kind of relaunching the channel after the, the, great, uh, the great coming of the you know what. And uh, I would really appreciate your support. Like and subscribe. Help get the word out there. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.